Hey gang, good morning or afternoon or night, wherever the heck you are. How's everybody? I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say what I always say. Uh, I'm just going to jump right into it here. Nice to see everybody again, YouTube people and DIY mold people. Uh, what I'm doing is I've made a couple small posts on the forum uh, using this new thing that I've got my hands on is crumb rubber or rubber crumb, or some people call it rubber powder. It's right here. It's really hard to find, and lucky me, I just happened to find it on eBay by one of the members on DIY Molds, actually. Uh, so I'll put a, a link in the description down below so you can find him if you're interested. So what this is, it's ground up rubber, and what we're mixing it with is with our latex to fill deep undercuts. I used to always use the uh, polyfibers from pillows, uh, you know, and you'd soak it in some latex and then use it to back into your, your uh, undercuts. So this is what a, a few other fellows that have been better members, uh, um, Tuscany and JB, they, they use this a lot. You can also use this mixed with your latex as like a reinforcing layer for, I'm going to be using it on that big model over there. Um, just to, to tighten up a couple good layers of, of uh, rubber on there. So what I did yesterday, this is the first time I used it, was I put latex in my cup and then I added the crumb rubber. Well, it took quite a bit. Uh, so I would do the opposite. I'd put the rubber in your cup first and then just start adding a little bit of latex until you get the thickness, the, the sort of paste level that you want with it. Uh, then all I've used is just a small palette. You could use a putty knife. You can use whatever you got. And all you're going to do is you're just going to scoop some up on the back of your pellet knife. And then you're coming to your undercut and just swiping up or sideways, however you feel comfortable doing it. I go up. Uh, you can see I missed this one here. But you can see how deep the undercut is. So I'll be filling that up today because you want to get that flush. That's so when you make your mother mold, stuff isn't getting hung up on these undercuts, right? You want to fill those up or else you're going to have a nightmare with your mother mold, be it fiberglass or plastic ba plaster bandages or whatever that you're using. Um, <clears throat> I like it. It's uh, easy, simple, quick. It sounds like a description of myself, especially the simple part. But uh, I like it. I'll probably be using it more now that I know I can get some. Uh, it's it's quite thick the uh, in between layers. So what I did was I put a couple of fans on it over nice and and, and it's set up really nice. Uh, I I strongly advise that put a fan on it overnight just so that that thickens up uh, and you can go ahead and keep on working. So I know it looks kind of ugly with the with the color compared to my latex, but this is only about coat five. So I've got another ten coats of rubber to go on here approximately. Um, so it'll be hiding most of the stuff. It'll be under lots of layers. So it's not gonna qu quite look so ugly and messy there. Um, but yeah, but that's about it. So um, so I'll just show you, I haven't done an update for, for ages and ages here. So I did have the, uh, I did part one of uh, getting your models ready for uh, latex. Um, I'm almost ready to get back at it there. I, I took a stop because as soon as October hits, I, I want to fly into production for mold production. Um, this was a year I was going to say that I wasn't going to do as many and I'm right back again uh, up to my eyeballs with models and pieces. And uh, so I'm going to be pretty busy for the next few months. But uh, October's going really good. Um, so I'll be doing in the next week, hopefully I'll be finishing off uh, we're adding to the series on preparing models. You can see that plaster pillar, uh, that beautiful one there uh, I'm working on. Uh, I'll get you guys all caught up on that one. That was a new one before I started the, the series there. But uh, I took a pause from that to hit onto this, but I should be able to get back to it next week. So I'll just show you the tables. Got lots on the go. I got a couple dragons for a custom color for a customer for next week. Uh, so those aren't for rubber, that's just for paint. Uh, see there's models everywhere, different stages of rubber. Those ones down the end are finished. These ones are just getting going. Finished. Going. Uh, I've got lots more plaster models over there to still get on to. 
been going good, been a pretty productive month. So I'll just show you in the, the back here. In, in case you miss my cactus, this is where they come for their winter. That's where they all sit in here. So back to the rubber. So, like I said, it's been a good month. I've got uh, about 30, I think, without counting, roughly finished, uh, ready for mother molds, which is, is pretty darn good. There's still a few more days in October left here. So that's more coming off the table. So yeah, it's been good. Uh, it's just sort of my system. I like to do the, the smalls first, work myself up to the mediums, and then hit the large, just because you need, it take, it's a little more attention needed for the big ones. Uh, like it takes you a lot longer to seam, uh, and a lot longer to get your rubber on. And so I like to get the little ones out of the way. And things are looking good this year too, that I'll be able to do a few projects of my own actually, which uh, I'm pretty excited about. I keep my fingers crossed because uh, like I said to somebody the other day, that there's always something to come along and sort of F up your <laughs> your production somehow. Never fails. So, uh, but uh, this isn't one of those fancy post-production intro things. It's just a, a quickie for YouTube and the, the forum people. And... Uh, We'll hopefully get another uh, vid up next week and finish off on these big models here. Okay, gang. Take care.